Okay, so before it gets super dark on me, I should explain what's going down. So, um, this stuff. I put, there's insulation behind here, which you can kind of see in there, that little crack. That's wool. So, let me put you down, hold up. Okay, so here's the deal. My van doesn't have like metal ribs on going up and down like along the sides, even at a curve, which would still be difficult because I've seen that in other vans. Um, but mine doesn't have ribs at all because it had so many windows. So, um, yeah, the whole wall thing has been kind of a huge headache. Well, the whole van is a huge headache. Building any van, I think, is a huge headache. So, what I have done is um, the whole metal part has rhino liner on it. And then after the rhino liner, there is Dynamat, which is for sound deadening because the van itself is super super noisy and rhino liner also acts as a sound deadener slash like waterproof barrier slash a little bit of insulation type of thing so yeah there's rhino liner and then there's a layer of dynamat for sound deadening on top of the rhino liner and then there is wool insulation and then <laughs> there's this white stuff. So this white stuff is called Polywell. And okay, I just got it at Home Depot. It's plastic, it's super light, it's like, um, seems, yeah, it is what it is. Th because of the fact, so there, where all these screws are right here, this line, there is a like metal bar that goes across both sides. And so it's screwed into, there's, on some parts there's stuff to screw into on the bottom but like there's huge gaps where there's nothing to screw into so it's not really screwed in at the bottom it's screwed in in some places down there and then here and then it's kind of um this bottom part is like a panel and there's even there's uh yeah seams in it um there's reasons for that and stuff but let me just kind of give you the gist of it so then going up to the top You've got um, large rectangles going all the way down. These screws that go all through here and like in there, like even though there's a lot, it's not because there's any support like behind these screws. They're not actually screwed into anything. What it is is the panels where these screws are, the panels overlap and they're screwed into each other. The reason for that so that they will create some tension because when the wool was packed behind there, then the panel started to really bow. And so, yeah, there's no support behind there, but they're, they're screwed together. So that way it will keep them more straight-ish, even though they're totally kind of warped and whatever. Um, so that the wool will stay in there <laughs> as good as it possibly can. So now... All of that being said, the um, polywall stuff is ugly. Like, I mean, look at this. I look like I'm in a freaking mental asylum. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, bang. Um, I don't like it. I, yeah, I just don't. So, I've been trying to, along with other people, we've been racking our brains trying to figure out how to do this. Like, how to um create walls without <laughs> basically without framing kind of because okay so um it doesn't necessarily need to be like a wall wall like like i don't know how to explain this this is gonna sound jumbled yeah so basically what's going on here now behind me with the poly whirl and the wool and everything it's pretty much good like they're, the only reason that I would want anything more is just because it looks gross. And so we've been racking our brains trying to come up with like how to make it look better while one, saving on weight, two, not having any support or anything to really screw into behind them, and three, the bed that's going to go in here is, is a, you know, certain width and 
so it doesn't give a lot of room to work with like as far as building like you know maybe so in front of the poly world then we put wood framing or some metal framing even just any kind of framing and then maybe attach like wall paneling that way right yeah that's not going to work because um not only the the bed wouldn't fit if we did that because we can't afford to lose really any more room on the sides coming in this way but the crash pads wouldn't fit so Ugh. this is a crash pad it is ginormous yep takes up lots of space that's the deal um so this is super duper important for like living um there's three of them plus three other things like them and then there needs to be room for at the very least two more maybe three so i'm gonna put this back give me a sec So yeah, those are super crucial. They go in a very specific spot and they are already kind of bunched in as much as they possibly can be. So that is, yeah, walls are just not really um, the easiest thing to handle in here right now. Hi, train. So what I've done is experimented with uh, some peel and stick wallpaper okay literally most tedious job of my entire life um here's kind of a preview of what it will look like so i have to there's all these seams right where these um meet up which is an issue. So I kind of have to tuck it in like behind here. That's fun. I have to hand cut this utility knife. Some, I don't know. Um, you know, funny thing actually. Okay, so I have two of them. Oh, I thought I was gonna drop that. <laughs> Why are you stuck on here? Okay. So I actually bought these, like shouldn't be waving that around. Um, a really, really long time ago. Well, actually around when I first bought the van at Home Depot and the only reason that I bought these was because of the colors. I was like, you know what? Everybody needs these sometimes, right? And these are neon, like they're so cool. And they were like on sale or something. They were super cheap. So I just bought two because I like neon yellow and neon orange. So I bought them. It's been two years, haven't used them once. All of a sudden, <laughs> this wallpaper thing is going down. And I was like, yo, where they be? because they're about to save the day. And they have, because I have to hand cut out all of the screws in the wallpaper. So you can see just one piece is, I don't know how many screws, like, I don't know, I don't know. And I've got to do it for all of that. <laughs> and for all of that, I might be a little bit insane, but the poly world is so ugly that like, it's going down. So it's been three hours. Let me show you, ah, falling out of bed. Let me show you the progress that I've made. Um, I did this weird corner, which took literally almost all of the time. So, man, I'm, I'm dying, my knees hurt. This is the wall that I've been working on. So, there's a little strip right there that I did. I did this bottom half where it curves. And then I did this part where it curves. This literally took forever because when you lay the wallpaper down, it wants to go straight and then because of the curvature of the van. So I don't know how well you can see this. I might have to show you guys tomorrow. But so I did one going this way and then this, where's this? Like this part is a sheet and then this is a, 
kind of a sheet because I'm so OCD, bro. Like, so, so OCD that I cut, in order for this to be at, like, a decent angle, like, you can kind of tell it's off right there, but, like, it's fine. Because for this whole <laughs> section, I cut out each individual little stripe thing so that like look here's a little leftover piece I literally cut out each of these <laughs> so that I could fit them and angle them the way that I wanted so that it looks the way that it is supposed to look and so since I'm a freaking psycho I mean I think it looks amazing I'm so happy with it but it took three hours <laughs> because one I had no idea how I was gonna do it so I started out just trying to like mold the paper to where it would look okay and then I did all kinds of experiments and finally I was like I'm gonna have to cut out each individual rectangle yeah I think that's what I'm gonna have to do so I did it it looks great and I only have to worry about curves one more time on the other side I'm not doing that today I'll probably do some more flat pieces because those are easy and um, you know in retrospect it would have just been easier if before putting on the poly wall if I had covered this stuff in poly wall and then screwed these on but you know wallpaper wasn't part of the plan then so there wasn't much I could have done. And also, yeah, there just wasn't much I could have done there. Um, it's kind of one of those things that, like, if I ever happen to build out a van again and use poly wall and sticky wallpaper, then I would do it differently. But I'll probably never build out a van where that's the case. Because if I ever do upgrade the van, there will be ribs in this thing. Or in that thing, I guess I should say. Anyways, I'm going to continue doing that. It's like 10.30, so I really got to go to bed. Um, but I'm going to try and get some more done. And yeah. So starting on the next day, I had a system down. So I was ready to go. I just began by measuring and cutting the piece that I needed and then got to work applying the wallpaper. There were a few tedious sections, such as this. And this, which is what I was talking about yesterday, where I had to hand cut the wallpaper around all of these screws. And then, because the bed frame was already built and inside the van, I had to get in some really awkward positions to work around it. Goes to show why planning ahead is important. I successfully finished one side, and then it was time to work on the other. That was just a matter of repeating the process all over again. Altogether, I think I spent around nine hours doing the wallpaper. So that's it for this van build update. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see y'all in the next one.